All right, I appreciate yep. you uh, coming on and chopping it up with me, man. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it right quick. You ready? All right. Mm-hmm. All right, Nathaniel in the building. Yes, sir. My guy from Maryland. That That's where you from? At least that's where your phone put you at. Yeah, I'm in the, uh, the D.C. area, but I'm in Maryland, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you, so you in the D.C. area, but not the DMV area. No, I'm in the DMV, yeah. Oh, I'm the in D- the M of the DMV. Oh, you at, <laughs> you at the end of the D. So you in the V. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, um, I'm like maybe, I'm in Maryland, but I'm like maybe 15 minutes from DC, you know? So oh. like I'm inside of the Beltway bubble, you know? Oh, okay, okay. So you, so yeah. you get the chance to, uh, to visit the White House on a regular, huh? Oh yeah, I've seen it, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> you say you you know what? I um my first time in Maryland was going to the Baltimore Toll Show back in the day. And uh-huh. you know, uh, you know, I took the family with well, the family came with me through twice and then I went on the one I uh, I went to the Toll Show on the last one was on my own, but we figured once you've seen the White House, there's no other reason to go over there to see it again. Right? Mm, it, am, am I right I about just, that? Yeah, I mean, because yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like when people who live in New York see people going to see the Statue of Liberty in Times Square. It's just like, I've done that already. You know, it's, it's, it's you see it once and then you've seen all you need to see. And I, I think that's everywhere with every travel spot like uh, well not with every travel spot I, I i i love to go down to florida to at least hit disney once or twice but for the people uh, but for the people that live down there it's like huh been there done yeah. that bro mm-hmm. there ain't nothing decided like you know you you talk to somebody from florida and be like yeah so you know i, I being down in florida you get to go to the uh the universal and all like that be like, huh? <laughs> yeah, it ain't no big deal to them. Ain't no big deal. <laughs> ain't no big deal. We 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 just go we we go there every day. Like oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I only get down there once every so often, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but I I, I can't say uh, what what is that? The Memorial Fountain is is that what that is? Is that, is that uh, the name of it? The reflecting pool in front of the yeah. um, Lincoln Memorial. Yes, yes. Now I lo- yeah. now I like going there. I I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I I think I I think I like going there more so than going over to the White House. Oh, that's the National Mall. Yeah, yeah. It goes all the way from the Lincoln Memorial. You take a nice long walk straight down to the Capitol. Now I. Well, considering the current political climate, it's not such a nice place now. But you know, <laughs> when everything calms down again, I might go back down there. But at any moment, you go down there, it could be a protest or you know something political going on. So that's what I tell people who, who plan on making a trip to DC is you know keep that stuff in mind when you do go down there. So you so there's like a a, a, poli- a political protest like every day even on the weekend and i wouldn't say every day but they can ha- they happen kind of impromptu they can just happen whenever like uh uh right in front of the supreme court like when that uh what you gonna call it that that private conversation or decision was uh leaked out like within minutes there were people gathering in front of the supreme court you know you know that kind of thing can happen anywhere you in know, dc you know, with the internet, you know, it's, you know, with the internet, it just makes it a lot easier for improv oh, yeah. meetups, you know? I mean, like back mm-hmm. in the, in the back of the day, you know, like that movie called, uh, I think it was the bus. What, what was that? Mi- the million man March on the bus or something like that. I think that was the oh, name um, of the movie. Yeah. Uh, during those days, you know, in time you, you would actually have to, Formulate mm-hmm. a pro, uh, mm-hmm. a, 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 a political yeah, yeah. thing, but now yeah. 
with the internet, you could just get on Facebook and be like, yo, protests in the protests in the uh in in the in the in the courtyard. Boom. Yep. Everybody there. Yep. It'd be ten thousand people in a couple minutes. <laughs> Jeez, man. So you say keep that in mind when you uh when you come down there to the to the DC area and want to see the reflective Absolutely. mall. Absolutely. You know, the, the Lincoln Memorial is is a pretty sight to see. And even when you go in there, you know, you know, they, they are pretty strict about being silent. Like, yo, you can't be talking loud, bro. Hey, yeah. bro, what's going on? Hey, hey you gotta go, my yeah. nigga. I was like, like yeah. yo, why we gotta why we gotta go? I mean, there ain't nothing going on in here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, we, man. yeah. Great place like that. All right, Nathaniel, man. Give me a, you know, introduce yourself and uh, give me a little bit of background about you. What, you know, what you used to do before trucking. Well, my name's Nathaniel. And uh, before trucking, I have an interesting little story, I guess, because I was already, I already had a CDL, but I was a class B driver. Um, I was, I'm primarily drove buses for about five years. So I got my CDL B in 2015 and before that i was just doing like regular like you know high school restaurant jobs and stuff like that so getting my cdl was like my entry into like the you know regular middle class life i guess all right so but, um, so when when it, you when you got into busing did you did you did the what, what was this public transportation like or like uh absolutely. like uh uh uh, what do you call those type of buses? Uh, damn it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but those commercial, the coach buses, there it is. So was it? Was yeah, it, I did. Well, I started out doing the public transportation thing. Yeah. Uh, and then I kind of, after I did that for about four or five years, I got bored with it. And then I moved on to a limo company that had coach buses. And then I did that for about two years and then the pandemic hit and then everyone they laid everybody off so i was yeah, pretty man. much out of work Damn. from yeah march 2020 to 2021 early 2021 i just yeah they shut the company down so 90 percent of all privately owned bus companies wound up shutting down when the pandemic hit wow i mean that that yeah. the pandemic just just took all of their business away Absolutely. Mm -hmm. when, but when, when that happened, when, I upgraded my license. Oh, okay. When when you was in uh, public transportation, uh, did uh -huh. you did you like go to school to get your license, or did you get your license through the public transportation? Because I know up here in Cleveland, we got our public transportation is RTA, you know, the Regional mm -hmm. Transit Authority, and if you want to come and rock out with them they would train you for your class b license was it like that for uh -oh. you up in uh up in uh up in the dc area well at the time i actually and i i was encouraging people to do it with me at the time maryland had a grant going on so like the state of maryland was was like we're having all of this major economic growth we need people i said uh, i got my um I got my license through the state of Maryland because at that time, like back in 2015, 2014, they were offering uh, a grant to go to uh, community college for free to get your CDL. So that's how I got mine. Okay. Okay. And, and what, why you yeah. didn't, why, why you didn't, um, if you was getting it for free, bro, what, why you opt for the class B other over the class A? Um, well, I don't, I actually can't remember. I remember trying to go for, well, at the time I, I was, I still had reservations about trucking. That was really what it was. I didn't know, you know, my thing was, I don't, I didn't know if I could do the whole thing of being away from home and all that. And, um, I have family that is mostly class B driver. My mother's a class B driver. She drove school buses. My uncle also did public transportation. So, you know, I just kind of, just following in their footsteps with the class B thing. But, you know, um, you know, I just, I just got bored with it after a while. Then I went to the limo company 
Then the pandemic hit, and then this is what I did to get my class A. I took my last seven hundred dollars and I went to a mom and pop school before that regulation changed back in February. Um, out here in the DMV, you'll see the posters for it literally everywhere. There's a CDL school everywhere. So if you live here and you can't get a CDL, it's because you're not trying. But I went to that school. The guy was, you know, pretty good, and um, he had two two little uh, day cabs with step deck trailers and he had a rented parking lot and he basically set up the test exactly how it is in Maryland. And within uh, two weeks, I took the test. They scheduled your test date at the MVA and uh, I passed it. And then I went on the trucking. All right. So, so well, now there's, there you, you can't just do that anymore. Go up in there, pay the $700 oh. and all you got to go through all this regulation BS and all yep. like that, man. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> wow, that was that's that's an interesting story right there for you. So you got so yep. so you got your class uh your class A. But before we jump into the trucking aspect, I want to go back to your to your time in busing. You you was okay. rocking, you you rocked out with them for about five years. Public transportation. What was some of the mm-hmm. what was some of the good. Uh, what, what was some of the good experience you had with them and what was some of the bad? I would tell people, like, I think for a lot of people that are in trucking that hate trucking should consider doing that because when you work for your local transit agency, you home every night, you're making probably about forty to $45,000 a year. That's like maybe twenty. I mean, like twenty five, maybe twenty four dollars an hour, depending on the city. And uh, you know, it's, it's routine. You're doing the exact same thing every day. It's like kind of having like a a local trucking route. You just you do your route, and you're you're more than likely going to be unionized. So the big the problem, one of the big negatives of, of that industry is that it's, it's heavily privatized now. Um, it's rare to go to an agency that is run by the government, so you have a government job. Some agencies are like that. Some aren't. But um, the, there's a lot of positives where you get to be home every night. You're making a good salary, good benefits. You, you, you're in a routine, so you already know what your day is going to be. The negative is if you're not a customer service kind of person, you're probably going to struggle because, you know, people are going to – you're going to deal with people, not freight. Like, you know, that was one of the things I loved about moving over to trucking is you don't have to deal with – you know, 50,000 strangers a day <laughs> who are all complaining about why are you late? You pull up to the bus stop and people yell at you, why are you late? Well, and you just look around and you see all this traffic. We're in the, we're in the D.C. area on a Friday afternoon during rush hour. I mean, you're going to be late, you know. But if you can deal with that, you know, it's, it's not a bad job. Okay, okay. Have, have you personally have any, like, direct issues with – uh? With with any of the any of the passengers, did you did you have to do the all oh, you get the uppercut on anybody? Oh, <laughs> um, no, because I wanted to keep my job, but I got close to that. I, I've been spit on. Um, with the agency I worked for, they had older buses at the time. They've upgraded since I left. They had buses from like two thousand three. And they ordered them from California. And I didn't know this, but apparently California transit agencies don't equip their buses with air conditioning at that time. So when they brought that bus over here to D.C. and where we have very humid summers, people would get on the bus and it'd be really hot. And they would think that I wasn't turning the air conditioning on to be funny. So I had a man spit on me. I've been hit by old people with their canes you know you just gotta you just gotta take it on the chin and just be like you know what i'm you know i actually remember that day i had to pull the bus over because somebody spit on me and i actually just called a supervisor i need to supervise my location and i just i got off the bus and just sat there because i knew if i had reacted i would have did that little uppercut move <laughs> bro <laughs> yeah i, exactly I don't know are. i i don't know about the the cane I could probably deal with the 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 old people yakety yak I can probably deal with, but the spitting no no bro yeah. I I don't think I can I how can you 
I mean, do do they teach you like you know when you when you were at the orientation for you know for mm -hmm. the bus? And you know they telling you everything you need to know. Was that conversation even brought up about about pe about okay. IRA people and stuff like that, and how to handle it? Yeah. Well, well, every transit agency they have the, they all use the same test. It's basically a behavioral test, and it's going to be like it's going to be a test of probably about fifty questions. I'm not even lying. It's a test that's about fifty questions. You take it, and they. All of, the te all of the test questions have four answers, and one of those answers on each and every question is called a supervisor. That's what they want to hear from you. Every single question, if you see that word supervisor and say call a supervisor, that's the answer. So that's all you can do. That's when somebody's acting like that, call a supervisor. That's all you can do. If you do anything else personally to that person, you might lose your job. I, I wish we had that. I wish we had that answer in trucking. Hey, call the supervisor. <laughs> hey, bro, why, 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 why you're late? Hey, call the supervisor. <laughs> oh man! All right. So, uh, so of course you said you, you know, you rocked out with it five years. Uh, you got bored, and now you know. Now you uh, upgraded to trucking. Let's let's talk about your time at Stevens, man. You uh, you okay. decide you decided to go to Stevens, and you know by the by by from what I from what I read from your background, the the initial uh, coming into Stevens was was good, but it it kind of went downhill fast. Take take us back to what happened to Stevens, man. Okay, so. I joined Stevens in July of 2021. And um, I had reached out to all these other companies, but Stevens is kind of notorious for this. They will, if you apply on Stevens website, they will send, they will, a recruiter will contact you within the hour. So being somebody that had been out of work for a year, I was just like, you know, I looked into their company and everyone who, who goes to Stevens says good things about the training. And me as a new driver, I was, that was the most important thing to me because I had heard all of these horror stories about other companies. Basically, if you walk in with the class A, they just going to throw the keys at you. And I know nothing about trucking. So right. that's one thing I think good about Stevens is they're, they have the longest training period out of any company out there, at least the mega carriers I know of. Well, you're gonna do at least they like, it, it, at least they're up there. At first, it was Prime. Prime had like they was notorious for keeping you out for mm. about six, at least about six months or so. But they, I think they uh, mm. tone, I think they toned it back down. So I think it's probably like three or four months. Guys, let me know in the comments below if if my assessment of that is right. If not, you know, don't take my word for it. But uh, like you said about Stevens being a you know being a good training company, I, I have talked to some to some good people that 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 found some mild success from uh, Stevens Transport, and of course mm -hmm. everybody everybody's favorite Instagrammer, uh, Jay Rich. You know she's you know she's okay. from Stevens, so so yeah, I I talked to some good people that that said Stevens was a was a was a good choice for them. As far as the training goes, but but go ahead, finish telling your your testimony. All right. So um, after about maybe three months at Stevens, I got a phone call from one of the dedicated um, DMs, and uh, he was basically like, you know, you join my fleet. We're gonna keep you on the East Coast, closer to your house, you know. And I was cool with that. I at the time I was still new. I didn't know that the Northeast was you know what it is and most experienced drivers didn't like it but um that's I'm, why they that, I moved that's why there. they that's why they said that's why yeah. they gave you the carrot they say here, yeah. you, here you go and that's your 100 dollars. <laughs> there you go man you know i moved over to the northeast on their craft dedicated and um i primarily ran like upstate new york and pa and all the northeast states and everything's pretty much good. Like, as far as Stevens as a company, like, I never had a problem getting paid. I never had anyone talking to me. For, well, sometimes people talk crazy, but not all the time. You know, it was pretty good. But 
My problem with Stevens is that it's very, very hard to be a professional, right? I take pride in what I was doing. I wanted my truck to be A-OK 100% every time I turned the key. So if I had as the smallest problem, I'm calling about it, and we're going to get it fixed. The right. problem I was having on that Northeast fleet is that there's a small knit group of drivers, maybe 20, 30 drivers over there. And um, none of the other drivers were doing pre-trips on trailers. I, I sent you pictures. You can see it for yourself. I mean, I got ton, dozens of them where every time I pick up a trailer, I'm running over to the TA in Carlisle, I mean, uh, uh, Harrisburg, or sometimes the Petro in Carlisle, to get tires changed, like every single load. Every time I go pick up a trailer, that trailer got multiple issues. And it got to the point where it's like, I'm losing money, I'm losing time. My manager, he's not a driver, so he's like, why is it every time I get you a, a load, uh, you're in the shop? It's like, well, because my coworkers aren't doing their job. There's, that's basically it. Like, you know, I, I would feel bad taking a, a crap trailer and passing it off to the next guy but it just seems to be business as usual over there. And right around the time I quit, that was the time the DOT blitz started. And I was not about to get caught up in that. So Nathan, 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 Nathan. You know, I, I, I think some of the accountability should be should be on the on the driver manager as well. Why would the driver manager be like, yo, why you know, why you you late or whatever the case? Yo, nobody's doing what they, they, nobody ain't doing the job. Pre-trip is part of the job. Pre and post-trip is part of the job. Let me tell you, let me tell you what my, what, what the, the owner of the company said. He said, look, I had to, pl this man said, I had the pleasure. He said I was at the shop on Saturday. He said I had the pleasure of being at the shop on Saturday. And notice, yeah. notice that a few, uh, a few, a few, a few of you guys, a few of the drivers, is not being professional. And what he mean by yeah. that? You're not doing uh, the pre and post strip, which is part of your job. He said. Mm -hmm. He said. Uh, he said that you know a couple of weeks ago, uh, a lot of the a, a lot of the loads was was be either late or or whatever the case, was because of you guys not letting people know if there's anything wrong with the truck and or trailer. And he said yep. he, and he said he's not having none of that. He said if you guys can't if you guys can't be professional, then we 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 can't have you. So I I I feel by you saying that your DM is saying like why why are you late and you over here telling them because nobody ain't doing their job then it should be up to the DM to reach out to the drivers in his fleet and be like, look, man, you know, we, we, um, we, 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 we got a job to do. And in order to do that job, we, we're, we rely on you to make sure that, that the trailers are in, are, they may not be in tip top shape, but at least in good shape for us to continue moving the freight. If not, if we can't move the freight, we're not making no money. If we're not making no money, and I'm talking about for my boss or for my owner, if we ain't making no money, brother man going to get rid of you and find somebody to help him that can. Man, you know, towards the end, they did start to acknowledge it was a problem because it was like he noticed it was me and another guy always, always in the stop. But the other aspect of it is it's embarrassing because it happens sometimes at customers. I picked up a load out of Tyson somewhere in uh, Illinois. And uh, this, you know how meat load is. You pick up, you go to the meat load, you go to the meat plant, you drop off your empty and you sit around and wait for your loaded trailer. I, I sat around for this trailer probably about seven hours, maybe 10 hours, something like that. Like it was a long time. I finally hook up to the trailer. They tell me they loaded. I do the pre-trip on it and I can't roll because we got four ball tires. And it's just like, you know, like that's what is, you know, I, I don't know what to do here. Like, this is not my, I didn't bring this trailer here. You know, there's no way for them to, well, I, I'm sure they could if they wanted to, to get to the bottom of it, find out who had the trailer last. But that for me was the biggest problem is just 
you know, Stevens actually does buy a lot of new trailers. If you ever on the yard, you'll always see about four or five new trailers on the yard. But it's like, as far as the trailer is not. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, classic kids who went pop. Def to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales who won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart could bars, you got bops. Heard you writing Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bum, bum. Yellow fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.